Magic Band Plus is here. More meet and greets have returned. Hey, Merida, a new look at an upcoming attraction. Hey, Moana, major cruise lines have started removing testing requirements and more. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We should be getting closer to that Tron opening, I hope. We found a lot of fun new merchandise for you, the prettiest drink ever, and a scented tree. So it's time to talk Disney news. So the Merida meet and greet has returned to Magic Kingdom, which I know so many of us have really been looking forward to. Merida was promising the kids she met that she would not turn them into bears in the heat. She must be sweltering under that Florida sunshine. We don't think it gets this warm in the Highlands, but she seemed unfazed. Merida is currently greeting guests in her previous location at Fairytale Gardens. Right now, she's only scheduled for two meet and greets per day at 9 a.m. and 1.15 p.m. If you want to meet Merida the next time you're in Disney World, be sure to check the My Disney Experience app because those times could change but for now make sure you've got a park pass for magic kingdom because she is not meeting after park hopping time magic band plus is here it's official magic band plus has been released in disney world and we've tried it all the main reason that most people are getting the new magic band plus is for the new features specifically you can interact with the 50th anniversary statues play a bounty hunter game in star wars galaxy's edge and see the band light up along with nighttime fireworks if you're looking for fun new ways to interact with Disney World, Magic Band Plus can provide extra activities to keep you busy during the day. We've enjoyed waving at all the 50th anniversary statues, even though we look real, real dumb doing it sometimes, and hearing what they have to say. And we feel like the Bounty Hunter game in Hollywood Studios makes Galaxy's Edge a little bit more interesting. These games are especially good for kids who might want a fun activity that doesn't require waiting in line. What about the cost though? Magic Band Plus starts at $34.99. Most bands that have a design on them are $44.99. Some guests can get a discount, like if you're staying at a Disney World hotel or you have an annual pass. However, many people will have to pay the increased price and that could be a deal breaker, especially when you can use an old Magic Band or even Magic Mobile on your phone and get around the parks just fine. One of the biggest issues that we've already run into with Magic Band Plus is that it needs to be charged. The band comes with a charger and Disney has said that the bands should be able to last between one and three days, depending on how much you use them. However, one of our bands was not fully charged when we got it, so we had to charge it while we were in the parks. Disney recommends recharging the Magic Band Plus every night for the best outcomes when you use it. We can definitely predict that people will forget to charge their Magic Band Plus or even not have enough places to plug in those chargers in the first place. Now, of course, Disney does sell the charging cables separately if you need a new one if you forget yours. However, Magic Band Plus will still work like a normal Magic Band even if it runs out of charge. It just won't be able to do those extra things like interact with character statues or play the bounty hunter game. You'll still be able to get into the parks, enter the lightning lanes, connect photos to PhotoPass, open your hotel room door, etc. And if you've used any kind of Disney technology before, you know it's not always 100% reliable anyway. Adding more tech to the mix in the form of Magic Band Plus has already shown some extra hiccups in the system. For example, it can be tricky to get some character statues to respond once you wave, like I said, we look real dumb. And we've had some statues respond immediately, while others we had to wait a few seconds and wave a whole lot, even up to 20 seconds, before any sound came out of the speakers. It's really up to you and your group to decide whether the new Magic Band Plus is worth the cost in Disney World. If you want more in-depth reviews of everything Magic Band Plus has to offer, check out our multiple blog posts on our website at DisneyFoodBlog.com. We've got some updates for you on when Magic Kingdom will be opening early. Yeah, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party takes place in the Magic Kingdom from 7 p.m. to midnight, meaning that the park closes early those nights for the party. Now, Disney has changed Magic Kingdom's park hours for those party days in August. The first party starts on August 12th, with the other parties taking place on the nights of August 16th, 19th, 23rd, 26th, and 30th that month. Magic Kingdom is now scheduled to open one hour earlier at 8 a.m. every party date except for August 30th. This means the guests who do not have Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party tickets will have one extra hour to enjoy the park before it closes at 6 p.m. for the party. What's more, guests who are staying at an eligible hotel will be able to access the park even earlier at 7.30 a.m., ahead of everyone else during early theme park entry. Note that the park's hours have not changed for August 30th, and no changes have been made to the September or October park hours calendar yet. 
Now the Walt Disney World Railroad takes another step towards reopening and of course this has Tron implications as well. In 2018, Disney World began construction on Tron Light Cycle Run in Magic Kingdom's Tomorrowland. As a result, the Walt Disney World Railroad was closed until its railroad tracks could be rerouted to make way for the new attraction. We've recently seen a tunnel that goes under the new ride being constructed with tracks and new tracks in Fantasyland too. Now we've got another update to share though. This week, Magic Kingdom cast members began training on the Walt Disney World Railroad. Just look at this great group of engineers. So that means the railroad is one step closer to reopening. Disney World has not yet released an official reopening date, but we'll be sure to let you know as soon as that happens. Okay, Epcot News Journey of Water inspired by Moana is a walkthrough attraction coming to the world nature section of Epcot. This is the big construction site that you'll see right behind Spaceship Earth. We've been tracking the project's progress, which you can see from the Epcot monorail, but now Disney has released new concept art. Previously, Disney announced this attraction will teach guests about the water cycle and how important it is to our lives, but Imagineers accurately explained a bit more about how this will happen using a graphic that he said represents the style that will be used throughout the attraction. This map of the water cycle was inspired by the design of Moana. The same design elements will be used throughout the attraction to take guests through the water cycle in a fun and hopefully exciting way. The attraction will also teach guests about the important job we have in taking care of our planet and its resources like water. So guests are going to walk through the attraction to see rock formations and fountains and other water features and along the way they'll also see graphics that'll explain the water cycle. Disney hasn't shared an opening date or time frame for this attraction yet but Epcot's 40th anniversary is coming right up. Now, two more cities now have direct flights to Orlando. Avello Airlines is adding two nonstop routes to Orlando, one from Lansing, Michigan, the other from Newport News in Williamsburg, Virginia. Avello Airlines is a low-cost airline based out of Houston, Texas. The nonstop service to Lansing, Michigan will happen twice a week, beginning on October 26th. The nonstop service to Newport News slash Williamsburg, Virginia, will also happen twice a week and will begin on October 19th. There are going to be new nonstop routes to Fort Lauderdale starting October 20th. And the price of the flights from Virginia to Orlando start at $29. Yep, you read that right. For less than 30 bucks, you can fly all the way to Florida from Virginia. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, this is an introductory rate, and to get it, you have to book your flight by August 9th, 2022. These fares are also only available on a limited number of flights and seats, and a $20 charge applies to booking made through Avello's customer support center. So a little bit of nickel and diming there, and who knows with these low-cost airlines, right? But 29 bucks to Florida? Maybe worth it. All right, the first major cruise line has removed COVID-19 testing requirements. Virgin Voyages, a cruise line based out of Plantation, Florida, is removing the requirement that passengers submit a COVID-19 test prior to boarding. Now, we know the CDC has paused their requirements, so cruise lines basically can do whatever they want at this point. And the new policy for Virgin Voyages took effect on the Valiant Lady on July 24th with the cruise line's second ship, the Scarlet Lady, following suit soon after on July 27th. So the cruise's COVID-19 test requirement to board has been removed. All crew members will still be vaccinated and Virgin Voyages is requiring that 90% of passengers are vaccinated on each cruise, but they are opening up the remaining 10% for passengers who are not vaccinated against COVID-19. And shortly after Virgin's announcement, Royal Caribbean said they will no longer require vaccinated guests to be tested for COVID-19 before boarding cruises that are fewer than six nights, according to a press release from the cruise line. The cruise line will still re require tests for unvaccinated guests on all voyages and for vaccinated guests on voyages six nights or longer. This policy will go into effect beginning August 8th, 2022. Disney Cruise Line, by comparison, is still requiring 100% of vaccine-eligible guests to be fully vaccinated before they depart. Of course, these cruise requirements could change. It's possible that this change from Virgin Voyages could signal an incoming change from other major cruise companies. Speaking of cruises, if you're thinking about going on one soon, fall 2023 Disney Cruise Line voyages are available to book. Departure dates are from October to December 2023, and it includes those Halloween on the high seas, sailings, and very merry time cruises. They're visible on the Disney Cruise Line website with available dates and starting pricing. Now, these include the Disney Wish, the brand new cruise ship, so if you want to know more about the Wish, definitely check out our video. In restaurant and snack news, Victoria and Albert's has finally reopened after the 2020 closures. If you don't know, v as is Disney's fanciest restaurant over at the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. This spot delivers an opulent dining experience and has a dress code to match. Also, to go along with that dress code, there's an age limit. Only guests ages 10 and up can eat here. 
so keep that in mind and make plans for someone else to care for those little ones. Victoria and Albert serves dinner in a variety of different ways. You can choose from three experiences, chef's table, an up-close look at the kitchen, and a specialty dining experience for a small number of guests, Queen Victoria's room, which serves a tasting menu and is limited to just four couples per night, and the dining room. In addition to the food and drink, you really want to soak up the space around you. The interior of the restaurant has been newly renovated, as we previously shared, and it features some incredible chandeliers, murals, and wall coverings. If you're looking for the ultimate in luxury dining at Disney World, Victoria and Albert's is truly it. We've got that brand new restaurant, the Boardwalk Deli, moving very speedily along. Over on Disney's Boardwalk, you'll now find the Boardwalk Bakery has closed. There were plants up all around the bakery, blocking guest access to the area. And there was a sign in front that asked guests to pardon the pixie dust while they prepare for the opening of Boardwalk Deli. If you visit the Disney World website for Boardwalk Deli, you'll see that no operating hours are listed for this spot until August 15th. Starting August 15th, the deli lists hours generally 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Keep in mind that things could change and those operating hours could go away, shift to a different date, change in other ways. We know what happens with construction. For now, it looks like this could be an indication that the deli would open in mid-August. And I also have a Cake Bake Shop update for you too. The Cake Bake Shop is another new addition coming to the boardwalk. It's a new table service restaurant and bake shop and will feature savory and sweet menus and afternoon tea service and all kinds of cake cookies and more. In a post on Instagram, the Cake Bake Shop and its owner, Gwendolyn Rogers, shared that they are another step closer to opening at Disney's Boardwalk Resort. The new shop is set to open in 2023. The photo shows Gwendolyn Rogers in front of the former location of the ESPN Club with a sign that says the Cake Bake Shop coming to 2023. This seems to further confirm that the bake shop will be taking over at least part of the ESPN club's former location on the boardwalk. We saw that the big weights and other signage from the ESPN club had been removed from this location, and it seems work here is moving right along as it transforms. All right, this is the best news ever. Chicken Guy has had an expansion. Now, Chicken Guy, as you know, is a chicken tenders restaurant in the town center district of Disney Springs. You can get tenders grilled or fried on their own or on sandwiches, and there are some really tasty sides. I mean, if you watch our videos, you know we are fans of Chicken Guy around here. Now, when Chicken Guy first opened up, it wasn't super big, but now it has expanded and grown. That means there's a lot more seating inside. The restaurant actually expanded into the Planet Hollywood gift shop next door, so now there's more room in here if you want to sit down and there's a bathroom in here too that's great news because you used to have to go and cross the street to go to the bathroom now we're excited there is more room inside to eat especially since it's usually so hot outside so maybe we don't have to always settle for those outdoor tables at chicken guy we stopped by Topolino's Terrace at Disney's Riviera Resort for some drinks when we noticed that a new cocktail was on the menu and we had to give it a try. The Topolino Tramonto is made with Stoli Vodka, Caravella Limoncello, Aperol, Lemon, Agave, and Butterfly Pea Flower Tea for $16. First of all, this drink was gorgeous. Just look at it. We loved the ombre colors of orange, pink, and purple with the yellow flower and a sprig of rosemary. And we're happy to report that it was actually pretty tasty too. Like many other Disney World cocktails, this one was sweet, and we thought it tasted mostly like lemonade thanks to that limoncello. There was a slight hint of bitterness from the Aperol, and we also tasted some floral notes from the Butterfly Pea Flower Tea. We could hardly taste any of the alcohol, so this drink could get dangerous for some. It's definitely worth ordering if you want an adult beverage but don't love the taste of alcohol, or if you're looking for something Instagram-worthy. Definitely, this is photogenic. Moving right into snack news, some would argue the most important kind of Disney news, we found another Seven Dwarfs cone this week. While we walked by Storybook Treats, we saw the new soft serve, the Happy Cone. This treat is part of the series of Seven Dwarfs specialty cones. We've already seen cones themed after Grumpy, Doc, Dopey, and Sneezy, and now Happy has joined the party. The Happy Cone is a chocolate banana soft serve in a blue cone with a chocolate belt buckle for $5.99. And if you're going to grab the Happy Cone or any frozen treat in Disney World, be sure to eat it fast because this melts really, really quickly. So this treat starts to look pretty bad and sad if you don't eat it quickly. So if this one looks good to you, head over to Storybook Treats, grab your own for $5.99. But be quick, those flavors do rotate often. All right, is anyone else super sad about the Choco Taco getting discontinued? And if you are, you are not alone. While I was trying to find another treat to fill that void, Salt and Straw said, have no fear. October 4th is National Taco Day, and while this isn't traditionally a holiday you celebrate with ice cream, Salt and Straw knew we needed to pick me up. And how do you cure a Choco Taco drought? With something mega similar to a Choco Taco, of course. Yep, Salt and Straw is going to bring the heat this National Taco Day with their chocolate taco lates. 
Yeah, I don't even know how to say that. Their chocolate taco is a handmade waffle cone shaped like a taco shell, stuffed with cinnamon ancho ice cream dipped in chocolate and sprinkled with flaky salt. And I know that's still far away, but we needed to tell you ASAP since we are still grieving over our choco tacos. It might be the end of July, but Disney thinks it's time to bring out the fall snacks. Yep, the Fall Flavors Cupcake is back at Gasparilla Island Grill in Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. This year, for $6.29, you can get this maple cupcake with apple pie filling and colorful vanilla buttercream frosting. There's also a sparkly sugar pumpkin on top. This is very tasty. It's pretty light on the maple flavor, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your preference. It's basically just yellow cake with a hint of maple. The apples and the apple pie filling were a little more crisp than we expected. It. We would have liked if they'd been a little more soft. And if you're craving some fall flavors this summer, this is a good option. It's also one of the only options at the moment. So it's pretty much either this cupcake or grabbing some drinks and treats over at Appleseed Orchard at Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. But just stay tuned. We're going to be talking about Halloween snacks galore pretty soon here on the channel. Over to merchandise news, the discounted Magic Band Plus has been made available for hotel guests. Launch of Magic Band Plus in Disney World has begun as we know. Various pre-arrival Magic Band Plus designs are now available for those who have upcoming Disney World Resort hotel reservations. The choices can be seen in the My Disney Experience app, and there is a pre-arrival discount too, which could save you some cash. For guests who do not qualify for the pre-arrival discount, a solid Magic Band Plus will cost $34.99, while a band with a design will cost $44.99. For the pre-arrival discount, those prices drop 10 bucks to $24.99 for solid bands and $34.99 for bands with designs. The designs include Magic Bands themed to The Mandalorian, Minnie Mouse, Darth Vader, Disney Parks food, of course, Mickey, the princess is Minnie, and more. Note that Disney has also said that annual pass holders may be able to get a discount on customized Magic Band Plus designs as well. If you're an AP, you should be eligible for that discount six or more days before your park reservation, and the discount can be redeemed once during the year of your annual pass. And I know you've got questions about Magic Band Plus. We are here to help. we got plenty of info on our website answering every single question. Check it out at DisneyFoodBlog.com. In Island Mercantile at Disney's Animal Kingdom, we spotted the Mickey Premium Bar Mini Ears. Isn't it about time those have come out? I mean, the waffle has their ears, the pretzel has their ears. Mickey Premium Bar, time for its mini ears. Now these ones are covered in a Mickey Premium Bar pattern with an ice cream drip style bow. They're made of faux leather and have a miniature Mickey bar as the icon in the middle of the bow. But as an added bonus, of course, these ears are scented. They smell like chocolate and a little bit of leather. And they're making us very hungry. Is 10 a.m. too early for a Mickey bar? The answer is definitely no. So if you want to pick up a pair, you'll find them at Island Mercantile for $39.99. But you might want to check major merchandise stores and other parks as well. Where do you fall on the scented merch trend too? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Think it's weird? Let us know where you stand. Now this next item will not be found in the parks, but I have a feeling you'll still want to know about it. Now on Amazon, you can grab the Disney Princess's Castle lounge fly backpack for $70. This Amazon exclusive is a dark blue faux leather bag with an Oliver print of the different Disney princess castles. It has a front and main zippered pocket to hold your stuff as well as two side slip pockets. And if that design doesn't suit your fancy, we just recently made a list of the best lounge fly bags you can find on Amazon right now. So head to our website at DisneyFoodBlog.com to see more options. Princess Jasmine fans have a new souvenir to get their hands on, and it's a new pair of ears. Each ear has moons and stars embroidered in gold, but what really makes these ears stand out is that gold bow and the jeweled crown over it. It's just like Jasmine's. The headband has the Disney Bobble Bar logo on a small metallic plate, and here's the thing, these ears are a little pricier than most. We found these at Emporium in Magic Kingdom for $49.99, but if you're a big Jasmine fan, these might be a must. Jasmine ears are not yet available online, but we'll let you know when they are. Something to keep in mind, we had a hard time finding a pair that didn't have glue from the gem on the blue satin, so be sure to look for a good pair of ears, a well-made pair of ears before dropping 50 bucks. Next, let's say hello to the Haunted Mansion Tie-Dye Spirit Jersey. We first spotted this new shirt in the parks recently, but now it's available on Shop Disney in all of its haunting glory. Right now, you can order it for $74.99, which is $10 more than what it sold for in the parks. Hurry, we think it's going to be popular. And a new Dooney and Burke collection has hit the shelves in Disney World. This time, it's all about the princesses. We spotted them over at Uptown Jewelers and Magic Kingdom and in Creations in Epcot. But don't worry if you're not heading to Disney World soon. You can also grab these online. The collection's print shows off Cinderella, Ariel, Belle, Jasmine, Mulan, Tiana, Rapunzel, and Moana in a unique style. You can find this print on the collection's satchel for $2.68. The bag has an exterior zip pocket, interior key hook, gold hardware, everything you need. There's also a 
mini backpack for $268, a tote for $298. All I have to say is, where is Snow White? She's the OG princess after all, and she's not featured. All right, ready for that scented tree we were talking about? Well, over at Treasures of Xandar in Epcot, we found a new treasure. We're talking about the scented Groot plush. He comes in his baby form and smells like cedar and cinnamon. You can grab him for $24.99, but be sure to get him ASAP. He's super cute and smells good, so we could sell out fast. If you can't get to Disney World, you can also find the scented plush online. All right, you know you can trust us here at DFB to have all the news all the time. And if you want Disney news on more than just Saturdays, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. It's 100% free, and I'll send you all the latest Disney info straight to your inbox. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.